Have any one of you done something in the past that you are not proud of? If you have, raise your hand. I'll be the first one. <laughs> I think if we are honest to ourselves, I think we will all put up our hand. Huh? Something in the past, uh, maybe not in the very far past, uh, that you might have done something wrong there. Oh, man. And uh, I'm sure if I you know, split us up, men, guys together, ladies together, you open up your heart to share, there will be moments in our life that we thought, ah, I wish I could go back in time and, uh, you know, um, re not re and, and change, you know, and not make those mistakes, right? Um, if you look at Jacob's life, um, his name and his life was mentioned basically throughout Genesis chapter 25 all the way to Genesis 49. But you see his life going up and down, up and down, right? Uh, it started with he being um, the favorite of uh, Rebecca, right? Um, while Isaac preferred the older child, but Jacob wanted the birthright and he, be and he was very deceptive. And then in Genesis 27, God still wanted to meet him. Even though he was the one that created problems, but yet God was willing to meet him. And then later on in Genesis chapter 29 to 31, he went and then, you know, I'm just going to summarize it. He got married and he himself, this time God deceived, right? And have to sign a 14-year bond, you know, for the hand of Rachel. And throughout, you know, he had 12 kids. And then in Genesis chapter 32 to 33, we see his encounter with God again. He wrestled with God and man and God dislocated his hip. And from then on, he walked with a limb, uh, which is not a bad thing because that limb will probably remind him constantly that, you know, uh, he had that encounter, personal encounter with God. Eventually returned to Bethel. He was very afraid that Esau would do something to him. So if you take the time to read through that two chapters, you'll see initially he's like, okay, um, he had a strategy. He put Leah and those that he don't really, you know, like in front. <laughs> You'll go first. <laughs> and Rachel, whom he loved, stay close uh, so that if anything happened, they can, well, Prakam Puseng and run, right? So it was kind of like, but then he abandoned the plan. And eventually, he went forward and meet Esau himself, right? And then in Genesis 37 to 47, you know, um, he went through a period of depression, fear, and uh, because now Joseph is gone, remember? The, and he now has his play, his favorites, yeah. and uh, Joseph was his favorite. And then uh, Joseph himself started to devour, uh, uh, review his, the dreams that he had. The brothers got so angry with him, sold him into slavery, and no more news about Joseph. He was so sad. And then when they're all grown up, you know, and Joseph, of course, became a very prominent figure, um, the dreams begin to become a reality. And then the brothers went to see to Egypt to during the period of drought, remember, to buy wheat from Joseph. But of course, they didn't recognize Joseph. But all this work, can you remember poor old Jacob at that time sitting alone in the tent, waiting for the return of his sons? Go and come back and then say, ask for Benjamin. Then Benjamin go and then, wow, then totally no news. So he's like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> all right. And then finally, they all came back and with an entourage, a royal entourage to take him to Egypt. And he, from then on, he literally lived happily ever after in a land that Joseph chose. They lived like royalties. So uh, Jacob's life was a lot of, you know, ups and downs. Um, it didn't start well. Let's, let's face the fact, it did not start well. But thankfully, by the time we come to 49, Genesis 49, things look very hopeful. And he was alive to put blessing on every single of his child, including Joseph. And today we see Joseph putting the blessing on 
uh, um, I'm trying to come up with Thai. <laughs> Ephraim and Manasseh, the two grandchildren. So this is what we're going to talk about today. Not so much of the blessing itself, but the transformed, if I use the word, legacy of Jacob. All right. So um, earlier on, I've just shared with you his journey, his life journey, and the transformation it took place. Um, did he learn his lesson about deception? Yes, and then no again, and then yes, and then no again. But yet God continued to work uh, to work with him. And it's kind of like us. God. If I were to give everybody a couple of minutes to share your experience, how you get to know Jesus, I had a privilege to sit down with Brother David in uh, Galang the other day, and he was telling me how he got saved and how he you know, got into a Baptist church in Australia. Yeah. And then uh, came back and never left, and continued to worship and serve God in uh, Heritage Baptist Church. And such a journey that we all go through. And I'd like to share with you about, and I think I briefly shared about this boy in our church. It's no longer, it's a big boy now, literally. His name is Satek. Okay, I think I shared with you before. And I think it's worth repeating because some of you were not here. Uh, Satek came to our church when he was 11 years old. Very shy. He was he he's always he has always been big because both his parents are big and both are chefs. <laughs> so they cook very good food. And I mean the fact that they named his son Steak. <laughs> right. So it's like, and so Sega has always been big. And so he was bullied, people make fun of him, but um, but his neighbor was a member of our church. So invited him to church. And he basically, wherever that member went, Sertek is like a shadow, right? Because he's afraid that people in the church will make fun of him. But we didn't. So Sertek felt very comfortable and started coming to church, started coming every day okay, to church. Uh, whatever we had going on in the school, in the learning center, whatever, Sertek wants to kind of be involved because uh, he, he never had that kind of attention. So his confidence started to grow. And um, by the time he was 12, 13 years old, uh, he became one of our leaders for the little kids. Huh? When we have uh, like a VBS, whatever. So they will come and do a bit of leading, like, like lead songs, this and that. So we gave him a platform. So one day we did a, what we call a mobile learning project in one of the public schools where we use music and teach English and the, and the, the school gave us that platform, kids all gathered. And Sertek was up there leading and uh, getting the students in his school, all right? The shy boy who was bullied now standing on the stage, leading his classmates and schoolmates in songs, in you know English, some English and so on and so forth. So the mother was there. And the mother came next to me and said, that's not my son. <laughs> my son not like that one. My son very shy. My son will not stand in front of people. What's happening? I said, wait, is this a good thing? <laughs> Double check. <laughs> is this a good thing? And the mother said, yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just so happy that my son is now full of confidence. And then Sate continued to grow. Despite, and eventually became the president of the student council of our district. Um, very well-known leader in that area. Um, he could have gone further, but he decided, he, one day he came to us and said, Pastor, uh, I want to serve in the church at 18 years old. I said, uh, what do you want to do? He said, I, I want to be a teacher. So I said, okay, we have a learning center with the Burmese. I said, you sure? Huh? Because these kids don't speak Thai. You have to teach them how to speak Thai. It's going to be a challenge. Turn out he was one of our best teachers to today. And two months, last month, he decided, because he was we're just trying out, he's still doing part-time studies, so and so forth. So a couple of weeks ago, nearly a month ago, he said, I want to go full-time now. So he's serving full-time and he's going to do, um, he's going to enroll in a university to study um, something to do with education or not, some primary education. Yeah, he wants to do primary education. So very dedicated, um, great change to watch this boy growing in his faith. Um, 
he was the same one that I shared with you several months ago who went to the parents and said, I want to be baptized. So um, now people in the village see him and said, wow, what a change. And even though at the age of 18, 19, Steg is already developing and building his own legacy. The teachers who saw a very shy boy now say, wow, he's different. He's now leading a leader. So same thing for us. What are we craving for in our life? Are we craving for that kind of transformation in our life? It doesn't matter if you are born in a Christian family. We do not have to live in the, in the shadow of a parent. I always tell Hannah, you know, Papa's faith is not your faith. You have to discover God your own way. God will help you discover Him in His own unique way. I cannot force it on you, right? I think she got saved, don't know how many times already, right? When she was young, we talked to her, yeah, yeah, I want to get saved. And then, you know, later on and later on. So, but I think recently, she really placed the trust in Jesus. So same thing for all of us. Whether you're in a Christian family or not, please pray for that transformation, just as uh, what happened to Jacob. Um, and then in uh, Genesis chapter 48, verses 8 to 16, we see that now Jacob, after going through all that life experience that we see from Genesis 25 all the way to Genesis chapter 47, um, he's now ready to pass on his blessing. Now, we don't have the time to read all the uh, 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 nine verses, but it shows that he was ready to call the two children right? The servant went to Joseph and said, your father is sick. And so Joseph brought the two sons and want them to be blessed, which is very traditional. So, but when, so you have uh, the son coming towards him and he is supposed to put the blessing on the older child, right? But he did not. He chose to bless um, Manasseh instead or Ephraim instead so while Joseph was very intentional to make sure the, the tradition, the cultural aspect is observed Joseph for some reason intentionally switched which Joseph should not be surprised because he himself was a favorite right and Joseph himself was chosen among all the 12 brothers. He was chosen to lead the whole entire family, including the father and mother. So that in, eventually that became a tradition in Israel. If you look at chapter 48, verses 17 to 20, while as I mentioned, the custom was to bless the older one, but Jacob decided to do otherwise. And so it became a common saying in Israel now that if someone have a son, they will say, God make thee as Ephraim and Manasseh. If a daughter, they will say, God make thee as Sarah and Rebekah. So that name Ephraim and Manasseh, Ephraim was blessed first, even though he was the younger one. So it was, even though it might be seen as an intentional act of favoritism, but it was a divine appointment by God. So we should not be surprised when God decides to change because let's not forget He is sovereign. And that is, we must recognize the power of God's grace in everything that we do. So um, without, I know we're running out of time. I'm going to just share some practical application in the midst of all this. Jacob's life was not, he's probably not very proud of some of the things that he did, all the deception and all that. But yet, God, as I mentioned, still in his sovereign grace and mercy, reached out to Jacob. So God is constantly reaching out to us. We have done something wrong in the past. Don't live in that past. Because sometimes we, you know, the power of resurrection has been given to us, right? But we are so entrapped in our past 
that, so to speak, that power of the resurrection that God has given to us is not able to come out. Why? Because often you will go back to the past. Oh, I should have done. I cannot forgive myself. So be like Jacob. Embrace God's forgiveness. When you've done something wrong, if sometimes, have this happened to you before, you're about to embark in maybe a certain project, a certain um, journey of faith with God, and then the devil will kind of meddle with your mind and say, oh, wait, remember you did that something wrong? You sure you can forgive yourself? You know, and then you kind of like, okay, should I go a little further with God? And then constantly going back to the past. No, no, no. When God forgives, He forgives 100%. He went onto the cross and died for you. To that extent. So embrace God's forgiveness and move on. Number two, I already mentioned that earlier on. What do you crave for? In your life, seek transformation. A good exercise is every day, just before you sleep, in fact, when you wake up, immediately ask God to give you an opportunity to do something that reflects and exhibit the transformation that has already taken place in your life. Like, be it through an act of kindness, speech, or whatever. Ask God for that. And, and then when you go to sleep and say, God, what did I do today? today? Right? I cannot give you a specific uh, uh, example because... God knows what you need to do to go through that transformation, right? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it's prophetic. It's something that God has done, but we are going through that transformation right now. We are going through that renewing right now. So when you wake up, seek that transformation in our life, ask God, Lord, I want to do something to show people and that I can also see for myself that I'm transformed. And finally, Pass on the blessing, like the song, the hymn that we just sang. Channel, it's only blessed master. We're supposed to be channel of blessing. Stagnant water stink. You cannot drink that water, right? But if you continue to pass on the blessing, just as Jacob now have a wealth of experience that he has gained from chapter 25 to chapter 46 or 47, right? And so now he's, as he blessed, his children. And then in chapter 49, a very interesting thing. We don't have time, but you will notice a, a switch. Joseph, at that point, is the, the most glamorous guy, right? It, up until chapter 48. But you will notice in chapter 49, the staff, the lion of Judah. He did not say lion of Joseph. All right. It said, so the glamour now will now shift to Judah, and Jesus came from that line. So, same thing. God has his way to continue to pass on the blessing. Joseph played his role. If we stop reading, at the, stop our reading in chapter 48, we would imagine that 48, uh, uh, Joseph will continue to lead. No. God wants everything to move back to his plan. So, um, you want to remember that God's transforming, transforming grace is always available to us. If you want to experience it, then number one, just as when we got saved, we ask God for forgiveness. That is something that we need to ask God every day. And then secondly, seek transformation and then pass on the blessing. And then when you look back in your life each and every day, 10 years later, 20 years later, you will remember more of the works and deeds that you have done through that transformed life than the mistakes that you have done in the past. So I just pray that um, Jacob's life, will, you will not just focus on Jacob's uh, mistakes, but you will now see a transformed Jacob in Je uh, Genesis chapter 48. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your love, for your guidance, for your watch care. We thank you that you never give up on us. We notice in Jacob's life that um, he has often depended on his own human wisdom. He has often depended on his own rationale. 
and that often failed him. But yet God, you meet him halfway and lifted him up because you have a specific plan for him. And then we see that being continued in the life of Joseph and then several of his descendants. Father, yes, indeed, um, your plan, your ways are higher than ours. Uh, you are the immutable God. You're unchangeable. So I pray that we'll continue to put our faith, our trust in you no matter what. Help us to uh, learn to embrace forgiveness and to always seek transformation in our life so that the blessings that come as a result of those works of transformation will be passed on and people will be drawn to the cross. People will see and also taste the power of the cross in and through us. We thank you and pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.